Hello, and today we are going to talk about how cells exchange materials. Um, I put this into two parts. This is part one, because there's a lot of information here. And I want to remind everyone about phospholipid bilayers. If you'll remember, phospholipid bilayers are what make up the membranes of cells. And here we have our little cross section of a phospholipid bilayer. We have the heads that are hydrophilic and the tails that are hydrophobic. And let's look a little further. Remember how our bilayer is selectively permeable. It lets some things through and other things it does not let through. Um, so now we're going to ask the question, what determines whether or not a molecule can pass through the membrane? And there are three main um, factors that influence that, polarity of the molecule, the size of the molecule, and the molecule's electric charge. Small molecules pass through the membrane easily. So if we have very small molecules like water, um, ethanol is small, nitrogen and oxygen are very small molecules. They only have a few atoms in them. Um, they will all pass relatively easily through the membrane from one side to the next. These two molecules happen to be polar and these two molecules happen to be nonpolar. Um, and regardless of their polarity, when they're small enough, they usually can get through the membrane easily. So let's talk a little bit about polarity next. Um, you remember from the last section we talked about what polar means, differently charged ends or um, very different uh, from one side to the next. Nonpolar would be the opposite of that. A nonpolar molecule is something that is fairly similar all the way around. These hydrophobic tails all happen to be nonpolar. Um, they're long hydrocarbon chains, and those hydrogens are sticking out in all directions on them, and it, they cancel each other out as far as charge goes, and they're very nonpolar. Well, if you'll also remember from our last section, like dissolves like. And a nonpolar molecule will enjoy being around another nonpolar molecule, but it will definitely repel a polar molecule. So here we have our nonpolar hydrophobic tails, right? If a molecule is not really small um, and it happens to be nonpolar, it will be able to go through, okay? But if the molecule is large and polar, like all of these, <laughs> they will not be able to go through because they are polar and these tails are nonpolar, so the tails will not allow polar molecules to go through if they are large. So these are examples of some large polar molecules that can't get through. Now let's look at our third factor, electrical charge. Okay, Charged molecules are called ions. Um, they do not cross the membrane either. So here we have some charged molecules. This is the symbol for hy a hydrogen atom. Um, and it is charged with a plus charge. Here's a calcium atom that has become a calcium ion with a plus two charge. And here's a, just the symbol for a chlorine atom. Um, and when it becomes an ion, it has a negative one charge. These all have electrical charge. And that electrical charge um, keeps them from passing through the membrane easily. I'd like to note this down here, ions can get through the membrane with the help of special transport proteins. They cannot cross through this lipid bilayer, but if there is the presence of a special transport protein, that is how some of these kinds of molecules can get through um, to the other side of the membrane. So what drives the movement of molecules across a membrane? And we're going to talk about a really important idea in science called diffusion. And you definitely want to know the definition of diffusion. Diffusion is simply the movement of molecules from an area of higher concentration 
to an area of lower concentration. And here's an example in this picture. Let's say we have these little red molecules and we have this nice little blue um, liquid that those molecules are in. And it actually, it doesn't have to even be so, um, a liquid. It could be a gas. We could have these molecules in the air. But here we have all these red molecules. This is a very high concentration right here. And we are watching diffusion happen as they go to areas of lower concentration and even lower concentration. So diffusion is movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to areas of lower concentration. In these diagrams, the red molecules are called solute. And just a simple little phrase that gets thrown around in science a lot of times, solute dissolves in a solvent. So the solvent dissolves the solute. You can just have to memorize that, but um, the thing that gets dissolved is called the solute. So let's take a, talk about a con uh, concept that's related to diffusion, and that is the concentration gradient. The definition of a concentration gradient, it's really simple. It's just when, the, when there is a difference in concentration of molecules across a distance. So right here we have a concentration gradient, high concentration over here and lower concentration over here. Um, so always remember, the solute is transported from the high concentration area to the low concentration area. That's the definition of diffusion. Um, and the movement of all of these solutes is due to this concentration gradient, which, remember, is just simply the difference in the concentration of molecules across a distance. Let's talk a little bit about potential energy because um, potential energy can be stored as a cell membrane builds up a concentration gradient. So here we have a picture of our lipid bilayer with the heads and the hydrophobic tails in there. It's our plasma membrane representation. And we have some molecules over on one side of that membrane, okay? If this membrane keeps these molecules over here on this side in a high concentration area, and it maintains this low concentration over here, it is storing up potential energy. Another important point to remember is that if substances are charged electrically, so if some of these, if these are ions that, that um, are being kept in different uh, concentrations on each side of the membrane, then we have electrical potential that is formed. And we're going to talk last about osmosis. Osmosis, you've probably heard that a lot and maybe even used the term, but in science it's a special form of diffusion. It is the movement of water across a selectively permeable membrane. And we're going to look at three different uh, solutions, three different situations concerning osmosis. And the first one is a picture of a cell, uh, an animal cell right here, in a solution. And this solution has um, water and it has some solute. See the little solute that's dissolved in there? It's a very low concentration of solute. We call that hypo. It's a low concentration, hypotonic solution. When we put this cell in a hypotonic solution, we get water crossing the membrane into the cell, and that cell swells up and gets larger. Here's our second situation. In this situation, we put, we put our cell, uh, our animal cell, in this solution where it's hypertonic. Hyper means a lot. We have a lot of solute in the water. See all those little dots? Those are all little solute molecules, and there's a lot of it. High concentration of solute. In a hypertonic solution, the water will exit the cell, and it will shrink. More water will exit the cell than enters, and overall, 
and the cell will shrink and shrivel up. Here we have a picture where the, um, it's called isotonic, and the solution is, um, has a similar concentration of solute outside the cell as inside the cell. And we call that an isotonic solution. There is no net loss or gain of water in this case. We have some water flowing in and some water flowing out, and it's the same amount total. Advanced proficiency. One idea you might look at how a hypotonic solution affects a plant cell and an animal cell differently and why. That's just an idea. You can have other ideas and I look forward to seeing you in class and um, maybe we can do some nice demonstrations to help you understand these concepts a little better. See you later.